أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والضحى والليل إذا سجى ما ابدعك ربك وما قلى وللآخرة خير لك من الأولى ولسوف يعطيك ربك فترضى ألم يجدك يتيما فآوى ووجدك ضالا فهدى ووجدك عائلا فأغنى فأما اليتيم فلا تقهر وأما السائل فلا تنهر وأما بنعمة ربك فحدث بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم <تصفيق> Sisters and children, I greet you with the universal greeting of Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It is indeed a very momentous occasion, it's an emotional occasion, and alhamdulillah, we make shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for granting us the strength and the health to be here today to celebrate this occasion. And we also remember those who cannot be here either due to illness and those who have passed. Before we continue with the proceedings, I'd like us to start off the proper way by having a few verses from the Quran uh, recited. Alhamdulillah, we have the Honorable 
Sheikh Muhammad, Qari Sheikh Muhammad Falanda, who will read a few verses from the Holy Quran. Tafadhal Sheikh. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد صدق الله رسوله يا بالحق لا تدخلون المسجد الحرام
ذلك مثلهم في التوراة to come through to us, mashallah, but there's no need to be worried. We've got pakkos for you to go back, inshallah. So inshallah, stay with us, and I hope you are here for the duration of the proceedings, inshallah. Amin. Alhamdulillah, this is indeed a very momentous occasion. And we are here, first and foremost, to say shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for granting us the opportunity to be here, to experience this occasion, but also for leading us through every step of the way. The step of the way that started long ago. We find ourselves in the northern suburbs, an area that was predominantly not for people of color. But Alhamdulillah, how to Umar's ground. It started out with a few fledgling houses in the 1990s. And those houses, and some of those first people are still with us, so, uh, mashallah, musallis, would give up their garages so that there could be madaris. A madrasa would operate from a garage. And then there were the humble beginnings. with the first Jamaatana in Park Road. And we didn't, we didn't, we didn't remember that space. And with that there was a vision, a vision to have a masjid, a fully fledged masjid. But it didn't come overnight. It took the sacrifices and the toil of many individuals. Some of them are not with us, they are al and Allah grant them the highest place in Germany. They had a vision. They knew what the end goal was. 
But the intermediate steps, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of planners. And as we didn't get this masjid in its current form, it came through a process, a process that involved those from the past who purchased, who had the vision to purchase a double story house at one Wendy Way, who then made the sacrifice to whatever they could do to convert it into a masjid of sorts. But it was a proper masjid, it was our masjid. In that masjid, the four classrooms, and we needed those four classrooms. Then there was a vision to expand, and when the property at Five Year Old Crescent became available, they made the sacrifice to purchase that property. And with that, the madrasa was operating from these four classrooms. The very space that we find ourselves in, in this main area. Four classrooms, subhanAllah. Those spaces served us well, and we will remember that for all. We will always remember it, it stays with us. And perhaps we have to go through this journey in order to appreciate what we have now. It wasn't handed over on a silver platter, but we appreciate this so much because of the journey that we took. And these four classrooms had to run two shifts of madaris, madrasa, two shifts, because they were small, three meters by four meters, each one of them. And alhamdulillah, we managed to secure the property and with the generosity of this amazing, amazing, amazing community. Each and every one of you, and it's not just monetary, it's with your du'as, it's with your well wishes, the way you receive the mutawallis of the masjid, the mutawallis of the past, the mutawallis of the present. It's when we make the call, as Malana mentioned, we put our hand, you put your hands in your pocket, there's no questions asked. We need money for carpets within four days, subhanAllah. It's, 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 it's really, it's unbelievable how, how the response that we get and how responsive this community is. And we are so grateful. You make it so easy for the Muttamalis of this masjid and for all the other Muslims with your generosity. I would say generosity is the hallmark of this community. Amongst many other good qualities that we have, I don't want to say what Maulana is going to say later, but mashallah, we have a wonderful community. But alhamdulillah, generosity is the hallmark of this community. And we say jazakumullah khairan to each and every one of you for all your contributions, for everyone, be it monetary, in kind. We saw those working today, packing the tables and so on, since the early hours of this morning. And we say jazakumullah khairan to all those in the past who worked, who had the vision, who had the courage to come, even during the apartheid era, had the courage to become a pioneering community. And how this community has grown, we are spreading towards Durbanville, we are spreading towards other parts of the Cape that were predominantly not for people of color. And that is spatial justice in its truest form. SubhanAllah, this is spatial justice as we see it, and a manifestation of it is in the way our masajids are spreading. SubhanAllah. So, with our gratitude and thanks, how could we not have a function like this and an occasion? We want to give something back, and we would like to spend time in, our, in your company, inshallah. But I also would like to mention, before I introduce our next item, I, I would like to mention one statement. It's a short statement, because there are many people, some of us, we, we, we don't seek to be seen, but it happens as a result of the work we do. And it's not something that we really aspire to. We want to just do the work. We're rolling up our sleeves. We wish we could be invisible and do the work. And that would be the first prize. But it so happens that we are seen. But that in itself is not always a blessing. The true blessing is a statement called Tuba Lil Akhir. 
It means blessed are the hidden ones. Blessed are the obscure ones. The ones that no one sees. The ones that when you take your invoice to them and you say, I need some of these things, they say, don't worry, I don't want to see the invoice. That's taken care of. Blessed are the obscure, the hidden ones. No one knows about them. A few of us know about them. And they, uh, they refuse to be known. They beg us not to reveal their names. Subhanallah, there are so many. I cannot, we, we, we are not going to make the folly of mentioning names today because once we start, it's, a, it's going to become a very long function. But I can tell you, the names are numerous and they know who they are. So I repeat that, Tuba lil Akhliya. And there's a reason I must do this for must do Tuba. Blessed are the obscure ones because for you, that's the fastest journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your fastest path to closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who are seen, it's, it, yes, there is some blessing in that people see what you do and so on. The mutawalis and so on, you know. But those who are not seen, those who pick up those pieces of paper who are sweeping, the brother vacuuming this morning, unknown, unseen, subhanallah, blessed are those. And my thoughts are with you as well, as much as it is with all the mutawalis of the past and so on. And with that, it's a, it's a celebration for all of us. And Alhamdulillah, just part of the journey was that we built the building next door or behind us, which is a multi-purpose center. It serves as a hall, it serves as nine classrooms, it's serving as an, uh, as an early learning center, which we are starting next year, inshallah. So I'm punting the early learning center. We need enrollment, please. And our intention, inshallah, is to have a WCED registered school of Islamic education and secular education. SubhanAllah. And we're making that come to fruition. A vision that started with the Paro Muslim Association in 1996. The first, then it evolved into the Paro Muslim Community Trust in 2009. We had to form a trust in order to purchase this property. And with that, that property at the back, it's consolidated, and now we have this mashallah consolidated property. But what building that did was, it afforded us the opportunity to take these four classrooms that were running on a double shift and move it to the back and have a single shift. All the various institutes that are here, and subhanAllah, it's really, they all complement each other in a wonderful way, and they are now housed in the new building. What that did was, it gave us even, and here's the Rahman Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, it used to rain on this line, it used to rain, the rain used to cascade down here, because we had a bad gutter system, or a roofing system, which was inherited with the purchasing of the property, but there was no money to fix it. But what the blessing was that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us is with our vision to repair the roof, we had the opportunity to scrap the roof and open up the space over the walls and use a bit of ingenuity and alhamdulillah we were able to demolish the walls so even with the leaks is the reason we experienced leaks for seven years Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had a plan that if you experience the leaks you will eventually have to change your roof and with that will be the demolition of the walls alhamdulillah subhanallah Allah is the best of planners we don't know what plans are yet to unfold for this premises? We don't know what is going to happen next door. Possibly another third floor, inshallah. Sayyidina. And that is, inshallah, in the pipeline. And we're working towards that. But many of the youngsters, I want to leave this message. Those who started in the 1990s knew the end goal. They didn't know all every step of the way. Some of them were in the industry. Some of them knew a little bit. But the niya was pure. And if your niyan is pure and you do something for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's nusra is with you. And I want to tell the youngsters, many of you are going to travel, many of you are going to find yourselves in new towns and new cities. When that opportunity comes to start a small jamaat khana somewhere, don't think we are only two families. How? Oh, well, who's going to come? Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam had the same dilemma and here we have it in panorama and you will have it in the next 20 years and the 30 years and so on 
when that opportunity comes, I'm speaking to those who are going to move out of the area, those who are going to find themselves in another country, start that Jamaat Khana. It will eventually become a masjid. You make that niya, have purity, refresh your niya from time to time, and you do not know that sadaka to jariya that you have created, and those who have been involved here have created a sadaka to jariya. Those who have donated in monetary, in time, and for all in the names of those who have passed, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, that will reach them. All the Allah And we say to the youngsters, Please take this as an inspirational note from the mutawalis of the past to start that Jamaat Khana, to start that project. When you hear of a project, a Jamaat Khana in a hospital or in a clinic or somewhere small, it just grows and grows. And who knows? Who knows? Perhaps possibly one day that too will be a Masjid Tuba. So coming to the name Masjid Tuba, Alhamdulillah, we find ourselves in Panorama. It was always called, or it was often called Panorama Masjid. And we felt it needed a, a Muslim name, an Arabic name, something that encapsulates the spirit of the community, the spirit of this area. And we ran a, a competition and we deliberately had it only for the youth. Because the youth are invested and they're going to be the future Mutawalis, they're going to be the future Musallis of this place. And we wanted them to be invested in the name. They have to choose the name, they have to think of the name. They're not going to inherit the name, they're going to get the name, they're going to do their research. And we had 25 entries. So from children aged 7 to 19, we had 25 entries. And we went through a process, we had judges who were um, mu'alimas and um, school teachers. They went through the essays and some of it was voice notes or videos to explain the choice of name and what inspired that name? We drew, it came down to a list, a shortfall of five, which then eventually became a shortfall of three, which was brought to the um, executive committee, shortfall of five, and we went through a voting process and the merits and the demerits of the various names, and there was a, a duplication with other massages. Alhamdulillah, the name that was selected, as you would have heard in the last two months, is Masjid Tuba. So, what I want to play for you now is just the voice note. That was the winning voice note. It wasn't an essay, it was a voice note. It was a 10 year old boy, Yusuf Baku. MashaAllah, he's here. MashaAllah. And his dad is here, very proud. And I'm going to play you the voice of Yusuf Baku, where he explains, where he, he gives his choice of name and the reason for the selection. Bismillah.
MashaAllah. So you've heard that. That's a product of our Masjid Tuba Madrasa. MashaAllah. So now you know where to enroll your, your children for next year. And then also there's the early learning center, inshallah. You'll see there'll be posters up soon. And um, inshallah we will have, uh, we look forward to um, your engagement in that regard. MashaAllah, so that's how we got to Masjid Tuba. And it's, it's the, the sound of children and it's an event like this that gives this masjid a beautiful character. Once we stop seeing children playing on the stairs as they are currently now, that's when we should be concerned. But we have children here, under the age of 10, that come for Fajr Salah, that come for Isha Salah, SubhanAllah. It's beautiful. And um, that will take me now to our uh, next um, item, which is a welcome from our beloved uh, Molana Wasim Hendricks. And the reason I mention that is that one of the characteristics of, uh, uh, of, of, of uh, Molana Wasim Hendricks is that he is our beloved Imam, mashallah. But he's always surrounded by children. He loves kids and they love him. They hang on him. Many of you are adults now. You remember 11 years ago when Maulana arrived, how long it is. So he's always surrounded by children, mashallah. But I must add, five of them are his own. <laughs> so mashallah, that's a beautiful quality that he has of the Nabi Muhammad sallallahu to have the children around him and love him. And um, with that, I introduce you our uh, Sheikh um, um, Maulana, Honorable Maulana Wasim Hendricks, who will say a few words. Thank you. MashaAllah, how beautiful it is to see your wonderful souls once again. Imagine on a Saturday afternoon, you come to Masjid Toba only to see me and you feel welcoming today. That's crazy. I remember in the past, the only thing that you want from me is to stop talking. And today they only give me the welcoming speech, MashaAllah. So uh, I'm not going to take too much of the time, but truly, Wallahi, it is overwhelming for me standing here, seeing all my teachers, being aside, by my side, always being there. Just one um, sad moment for me is that my honorable teacher, Mufti Taha Karawan, Rahimahullah, who used to visit me a lot here yeah, at Masjid al Tuba in the past, and he always used to speak to me, and I always used to consult with Mawlana, and he always used to bring your heart at peace and at peace and calm. And today we're standing here and he would have been so proud and happy because it was always discussed that our masjid will be expanded. And the words of Mawlana Ta'a for me was always that I have a lot of patience. Imamat is not easy. Imamat is very difficult. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen you, he said. So you need to have patience. And if you're going to stay here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make your path, your path easy for you. And today I can see the fruits of that. I think I've got the most wonderful community. Mahfid Ibrahim, I've got the honorable Sheikh Ibrahim Gabriel here who has a masjid, but Sheikh Mahfid. I think my community now, Allah is. I've got the Mufti of MJC, Sheikh Abdurrahman Khan here, but Mahfid Ibrahim. I've got Imam, my honorable teacher, Sheikh Ibrahim Ghafur here, but Mahfid Ibrahim. I've got the honorable Sheikh Muhammad West from Burhanu, but ma Sheikh. Sheikh, can you come here? Sheikh is in Musaliya, and Sheikh makes me proud of being Musaliya, alhamdulillah. And we have the honorable Sheikh Muhammad from Hender. You know, mashallah, lands down. Allahu Akbar. The sounds that reverberate through the walls of lands down, we all know and how it reverberated today in our masjid. But ma Sheikh. This masjid and this community, Allahu Akbar, they make me extremely proud. And I'm sure that every Imam that sits here feel like that about their community. And it's just by right soul. That is what Islam is. It brings khayr, it brings barakah. And it reminds me of the hadith that I mentioned at the soft opening about the Prophet Sallallahu When he entered Medina, everybody waited for the speech. You know, the main speech to come. And what did the Rasul Sallallahu say? Feed, feed the poor. <laughs> feed the poor. 
make salam and you will end their jannah with peace and this is what this community is they general they we've heard about our generosity a very generous community allah is blessed them and may allah always bless them and all other communities inshallah to partake so with these starting with these few words and being emotional i must mention to you also i i i i was totally shocked i was sitting in the masjid prior to everybody coming and i was reciting from the front some quranic verses and as i recite allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let my mother and my grandmother walk in front of me and they surprised me today and they also yeah and our elder of our community gave me some beautiful advice and words he said maulana uncle farid i will mention his name he said you don't know how favored you are by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's your mother and your grandmother can witness this with you today my wife and my children running up and down they were the ones that stood by me when it was not so easy and the committee stood by me when it was not so easy and wallahi like i mentioned this community they always get together and when you need they are there for you and i don't think there's any other imam that can feel the way that i'm feeling today I always, if I look up now, subhanAllah, or yesterday, that was the masjid. When I look now, I say, subhanAllah, it looks so small. But I can promise you when I stood there, it looked like a huge masjid. It looked like I'm giving a lecture to a thousand and thousands of people. Today we have this big, beautiful building. And I want to say, don't let the building try now for you to come. My dua and my, my appeal to you is now we need to fill all these soft, these sufus, like we fold the sufuf upstairs. So I ask everybody to say, Ameen. Insha'Allah, I'm going to hold you to that Ameen. I want to see you in the masjid. Fajr, Dur, Asr, Maghrib, Isha. Wallahi, this is the place to be. This is where Allah's rahmat and barakat is. Allah bless you. And my wife and my children, they who stood by me, and my mother, and my grandparents, and my aunt who's here today. Allah bless them because they had a lot of, a lot of patience. I had to leave my house very early in my life. We didn't have, you know, a, a, a beautiful young life that was uh, full of wealth. And, but Alhamdulillah, what we had was we had adab that was taught by our parents, and today we can execute that and teach others. So may Allah elevate our parents. May Allah elevate our teachers. May Allah grant the deceased Jannah to fit those and the highest rank in Jannah, inshallah ta'ala, for the sacrifices that they had to have with us. And now I want to say welcome everyone to Masjid al -Tuba. It is Allah, the most beautiful feeling to see you here today and to enjoy this beautiful moment, this momentous occasion with us. Allah bless you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fill your lives with khayrat and barakat and rahmat and tajalliyat and sakinat insha'Allah. But we love you for the sake of Allah and we can't wait to see you every day in the house of Allah where we meet and we know my wife or one of them, when we at the masjid, Wallahi, when you go home, you get a hiding every day. Why? Because you just can't leave this place. Uncle Moiti is laughing now because he always say, Ya Allah, Mulana. You know, my wife will always tell me, Ya Khan Jabiya, Manakum Jabiya. He's too. When you come to masjid, you don't know when you go home, mashallah. So Allah bless you. Shukran so much for coming, inshallah ta'ala, and keep us in your eyes. And Jazakum Allah khairan. And I feel that I'm from the Rabbil Ayn. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakum Allah Khairan, Maulana Wasim. We all know um, Maulana Wasim um, to be loving, caring, always available, always a smile on his face, no matter what happens or how bad the news is sometimes. But SubhanAllah, I've seen through the years the tenacity and the endurance of Maulana. And we are indeed very blessed to have him in our community. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him a long, healthy umar that he may continue to serve us, inshallah, as he has in our children. Our next item is the keynote speakers. And alhamdulillah, we are most blessed to have the Mufti of the MJC, 
Mufti uh, Khan with us, alhamdulillah. And we also have our Honorable uh, Sheikh Ibrahim Gabriels, who will be the keynote speakers. I'm not exactly sure in what order they will be speaking, but mashallah, uh, Mufti Sabi, if you could. Um, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidi al-Mursaleen wa imam al-Muttaqeen Sayyidina wa habibina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Our honorable MC Our honorable Mufti Abdul Rahman Khan Mufti of the MCC Honorable Imam of the Masjid, Mullah Wasim, Mullah Ibrahim Ghafoor, Shaykh Muhammad Kulanda, Shaykh Muhammad Wist, Mullah Nah Tahir, and all our respected ulama, my beloved mothers and fathers, beloved sisters and brothers, and honorable and beloved youth and children, I greet all of you with the universal greetings of love and peace and mercy. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, we thank Allah. In fact, we can't thank Allah enough for this special occasion. At the opening of a new part of this masjid, the house of Allah, Kandarama and Plattakluv and Durbanul is one of the beautiful places of Cape Town. But in the whole of Panorama and Katakluf, this is the best place of the whole of Panorama and the whole of Cape Town. A person came to Rasulullah and he asked, Ya Rasulullah, ma khayru baqa ala al-ard? Ya Rasulullah, what is the best places in the world? So our beloved Nabi Muhammad alayhi sallatu wa sallam said, to, the, to this Sahabi, and Allah will give you Hatta Asala Ahi Jibaril Ali Salam. I'm not gonna respond to you, I'm first gonna ask my brother Jibaril Ali Salam. And when Rasulullah asked Jibaril Ali Salam, Jibaril Ali Salam said, Ya Rasulullah, and Allah will give you Hatta Asala Rabbal Alameen. I'm not gonna respond to you, I'm first gonna ask Allah Rabbul Alameen. And Allah sent. The response to us, response to Rasulullah, and the khayr of the qayl art, Masajidullah. That the best places in the world is the houses of Allah. So alhamdulillah, we are honored to be in one of the best places in the world. Alhamdulillah. And any person who is connected to the house of Allah, you're gonna, you're gonna be honored on the day of Qiyamah. You're gonna stand under the arsh, under the shade of Allah's arsh. The day when there's going to be no shade. So keep your hearts connected to the message. And part of that connection is to be here five times a day. And that's not all. You must always be concerned about the message. You love the message because this is the house of Allah. You want to do what everyone to, can do for the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of us know the famous hadith of the Nabi Muhammad wasalam. مَنْ بَنَا لِلَّهِ مَسْجِدًا بَنَا اللَّهُ لَبَيْتًا فِي الْجَنَّةِ Whosoever builds a masjid, then Allah will build for you a palace in Jannah. So the hadith doesn't stop there. The Sahaba then said, Ya Rasulullah, but we are not rich people. We will be able to build a masjid. And we will be deprived of that great reward. So the Nabi Muhammad said, Alayhi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, No, 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 no. Even if your contribution is the size of a bird's nest, that's the size of a bird's nest, Allah will give you the same reward. So, Mubarak, congratulations to all those people, beautiful people and wonderful people of this community that have contributed to this masjid. May Allah grant you palaces in Jannah. So, Alhamdulillah, we have now this beautiful place. So the question is now, where from here? Because we as Muslims, we are always positive and we can't be stagnant 
We need to move forward. So I want to suggest today, and I've heard from Mother Nawasim, and rightfully, and true, that this is a wonderful community. But I want to suggest that you make this a strong base of the Muslim Ummah and Islam in this part of the world. And be a more vibrant community. And what I'm referring to now is that we shouldn't keep this beauty and this beautiful feelings and feelings of love and connection to Allah and connected to Rasulullah to ourselves. In the whole of South Africa, we are only 3%. The time has come that we need to move forward. And one of the ways we're going to do it here, inshallah, in this part of the world and the rest of Cape Town is to have and display not only with Muslims, but even more especially with non-Muslims, the best of akhlaq. That was the whole mark of Rasulullah sallallahu Rasulullah says himself sallallahu alayhi The actual reason why Allah has sent me to this world is to complete the best of character. Sometimes Muslims have got the wrong understanding of our existence in this world and our dealings with other people. Allah gives us the best of guidance. Allah says, لا ينهاكم الله عن الذين لم يقاتلوكم في الدين ولم يخرجوكم من دياركم أن تبروهم وتقسطوا إليهم. Allah does not prevent you to have the best of dealings. With the non-Muslims, those who do not forcibly remove you from your homes and they don't fight you in your deal. And that is the case of most of the people here around us. There might be a handful that are fighting us and show animosity and enmity, but the majority of them. So this wonderful community. That we've heard Dolana Wasim explain so beautifully. May Allah subhanahu wa grant you great success. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, Allah has blessed you with a vibrant Imam, Dolana Wasim. And I know you that you will remember how Dolana Wasim came here. So I'm just reminding you that one of the best scholars and teachers and ulama. That we had in Cape Town, the Honorable Mawlana Toha Karan, he is the one that brought Mawlana Wasim here. And that must always be remembered and it must always be appreciated. It's almost like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given Mawlana Toha that vision that you take Mawlana Wasim by his hand and you bring him to this community. Alhamdulillah. So part of the reason why this is one of the most wonderful communities is because we've got a wonderful leader here. You know, Mawlana Wasim is so vibrant, even the color of his juba mixed with the, with the carpets. I, mean, I, I don't know, it's, it's amazing. When I came in here, I saw the color of the carpets and I saw Mawlana's juba, I said, yo, yo, yo. And I'm sure that you know what's the meaning of Wasim. Was the meaning of Asim is handsome. But he's not only handsome outside, he's more handsome from the inside. So may Allah grant that the Lord of Asim is going to be here, here for many, many years. This prime, this yesterday Juma, one of the Musallis reminded me, I, I didn't realize that the, May, the month of November, 34 years ago, I started in Masjid al Rabiq for the liberation of Masjid Aqsa in Portland. 34 years and last week I was here and I said and I'm going to repeat it that Alhamdulillah for 34 years I am of the one most fortunate Imams in Cape Town no problems with community no problems with committee 34 years and I'm sure it's going to be inshallah for another 34 years <laughs> but that, this is the spirit 
we, we can't have, you know, this community, inshallah, must stay united. We, we heard the ayah that Shaykh Muhammad read earlier. Allah described the Mu'mineen, Ruhama They are most compassionate with one another. Wallahi, I, I made a few notes. And I said, and I'm talking about personal experience. Most of the people that I love is because of the message. Here you learn true love. And inshallah, the Nabi Muhammad has informed us that you, your love that you have for other Muslims, you will be under the game the day of Qiyamah. It will be announced, Aina Mutahabuna Fillah. Where are those people who love one another for the sake of Allah? Bring them forward and put them on members of Noor. So this young man of 10 years old, mashallah, beautiful. He says that this community is going to sit under the tree of Tuba in Jannah. What a beautiful dua by a young, young boy in this community. But inshallah, even more than that, because of your love for one another. You're going to sit on members of Noor the day of Yom al -Qiyana. So with these few words, uh, as part of Cape Town community and part of the leadership, we, shall, we say Mubarak to this beautiful community for what you've achieved. And may Allah subhanahu wa grant you inshallah that you're going to move forward and you're going to take the lead. It's nothing wrong that you as a community say, we are going to take the lead in Cape Town. Because it's not for the for, for, for show and to impress people it's only for the sake of Allah but we're going to take the lead how we as a community many years ago there was not a single Muslim in this part of the world but look at the barakah and the nur that Allah has granted because of a few people starting doing things sincerely and purely for the sake of Allah I'm, I'm sure that my time is over I just want to end off the way I always end off my food bus and my lectures and that is just to remind everybody that our beloved Nabi Muhammad had so much love for us and so much concern and so much wanted each one of us to enter Jannah a few seconds before Rasulullah left this world the Nabi Muhammad spoke to us and says as salah, as salah please preserve your salah because as much as I want you to go to Jannah you won't be able to go to Jannah unless you've got the key to the Jannah and the key to the Jannah is your five times salah every day and we always have good thoughts about Muslims. And I would love to think that everybody are making five times salah. But my dear sister or my dear brother, if you are here and you are not making five times salah on time every day, this is your moment for you to make that crucial decision that from today onwards, you're not going to miss one salah. And once you're going to make that decision, you're on your way to the Jannah. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad. Alhamdulillah wa Allahu Akbar. Enemy of Islam. 
In fact, he was responsible for killing some of the companions of the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Not only was he responsible for killing some of the Sahaba, and it's amazing that we should take note how Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam interacts with this person eventually, even though he killed Sahaba. Today, how do we conduct ourselves? Now the Sahaba are dear, beloved to us. They were more beloved to Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He killed Sahaba and then he took, he made a statement that he wants to take the life of the Prophet Muhammad And he went, left Yamama to go and perform Umrah, but in Umrah of the Mushrikun and Umrah to idols. And uh, he passed by a group of the Sahaba and they saw their Stumama that is guilty for killing Sahaba and is threatened to take the life of the Prophet So they captured him. And they brought him to the masjid of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When they brought him to the Prophet's masjid, they tied him around a pillar in the masjid of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who was a prison. And that pillar till today is marked in the roda, where Tumama was tied around. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to learn he was there, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to meet him. And the Prophet told his companions that treat your prisoner with kindness. Treat your prisoner with kindness. Ensure that he receives his food on time. And whenever he needs to, don't tie his body too tight. And when he needs to relieve himself, two people, you know, with dignity, and with other with etiquette, should assist him to go and relieve himself, take him and then bring him back in time, up again in the masjid of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he remained for about two nights in the Prophet's masjid. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came to him on two or three occasions. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked him, what do you say, O Thumama? And he responded saying, Ya Rasulullah, if you were to kill me, you will kill somebody who has value in his blood, that dummy. Because he was a chief. Well, in two nights, but if you show me gratitude, if you show me your favor and generosity, then you will show generosity to someone who is faithful and grateful. Shaki. And uh, this happened for two days. But what I want to share with the Jama'ah is that Thumama is in the masjid of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And imagine what an impact those two days in the Prophet's Masjid has on the heart of the mama that is tied around the pillar in the Prophet's Masjid. And we as Muslims, those from the Panorama community and those from the outside, we can ask ourselves a very important question that what would have happened had the mama been tied up in our Masjids? So the mama is in the Masjid of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He witnesses the Maghrib prayer. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam leading the salah. Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Sayyidina Umar and the Sahaba standing behind him in straight rows. He hears the beautiful recitation of the Quran of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And there was no one that recited the Quran more beautiful than Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right? No one's recitation could compare to his recitation. I think it was, uh, it may have been Umm Hani who said that she remembers hearing the recitation of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam while laying in the bed and the Prophet was in the haram and she said, but Allah I've never heard anyone recite the Quran more beautiful. Another Sahabi said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he did the salah of Maghrib wa Isha and he recited what teeny was zaytuni and but Allah I've never heard anyone recite it more beautiful than him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the mama hears Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the salah. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ends Maghrib but the masjid is not empty. He sees the Sahaba remaining in the masjid. Because they knew the value of the time between Maghrib and Isha. On the day of judgment, an announceable announced that Tajafa Those people who used to worship Allah in the masajid, praying for well being, reciting Quran, between Maghrib and Isha, they didn't stand up and go to Jannah without their king. So he sees. Sahaba, praying with you, Maghrib and Isha. Isha, the Prophet, needs a salah again. After Isha, he sees Sahaba, they're still in the masjid. They're reciting Quran, they're making dhikr, there's gatherings of money, there's gatherings of dhikr, and he witnesses this. Imagine what he saw during the night. And imagine what he would see in our masjids during the night. The masjid's not empty. Throughout the night he's hearing one Sahabi reciting Quran in one corner and crying in his sajda. Another Sahabi is reciting Quran and crying in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine what this does to the heart of Sumer. 
until it becomes, it reaches a point that the Prophet says to Thumama that you are free to go. Untie and let him go. So the mama leaves the masjid. He goes to the closest water point. He takes a ghusl. He returns to the masjid. He stretches his hand out to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he says, I want to become Muslim. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammad al Rasulullah. He says to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, before these two days in this masjid, there was no one under the sun more hated to me than you. Today you are the most beloved of people to me. Before my two days in your masjid, there was no deen that I detested more than your deen. Your deen is now the most beloved of deen, deen religion to me. Before two days in your masjid, your city was the most detested of all cities to me. Today it's the most beloved of all cities to me. If the mama was in our masjid, if the mama was in our masjid today, what effect would our masjid be on the mama? And my core here is, mashallah, we heard our Amir Shaykh Ibrahim and the chairman speaking about the Imam. And when I was seeing someone that we know very well and very dear to us. And he runs many programs on the masjid. And I have been part of programs in this masjid in the past. But what we as a community must ask ourselves, where are we when those programs are happening? Are we going to let this beautiful masjid be a beautiful masjid in terms of its calling, its form and its carpet? Are we going to adorn the masjid with which masjids must be adorned? The Quran, classes of knowledge, gatherings of zikr, having the masjid filled for the fajr prayer and for the door prayer. And that's a very important question. We heard Shaykh Ibrahim speaking about it, we heard Muna Asim speaking about it, but we must leave here today with that question and honor. Are we going to let the masjid only be beautiful in terms of its form, but are we going to leave the masjid empty in terms of its ruh? The Prophet's masjid was alive and the man was tied up. Two days in the masjid and Iman into his heart. The last thing that I wish to share is that anyone that assists the masjid or supports the masjid, even in the slightest way, with a good intention, with a sincere intention, then your action and your deed is seen by Allah and it is seen by the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu there was a black lady. Remember this name, Ummu Mihjan. Right? Remember Ummu Mihjan's name. A black lady who was like a caretaker of the masjid of Rasulullah. And her job was to sweep out the masjid. Kana taqumul masjid. Right? Subhanallah, just think how many people have gone by in history whose names have been forgotten. But Ummu Mihjan, her name is still remembered. And why is the name remembered? Not because of a battle that she fought, not because of a bravery, not because of a tahajjud, not because of a sadaqah, not because of a charity. History remembers Ummu Mihjan because she used to sweep out the masjid of Rasulullah. And she passed away at night. The Sahaba didn't want to travel Rasulullah and they buried her in Jannah al -Baqir. The Prophet then observes that Ummu Mihjan, is, he doesn't see her around. So he asks, where is Ummu Mihjan? The lady that used to sweep the masjid of Rasul So he said, Ya Rasulullah, she passed away, we didn't want to trouble you. We had a ghusl performed, pray salatu janaz and adabal, as if she, she didn't hold a great status in the eyes of Allah. So the Prophet said, why did nobody inform me about the person of Ummu Mihjan? Not only that, the Prophet in Sahih Muslim, he said, Dulluni ala qabriya, take me to the grave of Ummu Mihjan. So they took Rasul to a grave, and the Prophet prayed Salatul Janazah over her grave. And in Sahih Muslim, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, that area where she was buried, she he said that these graves around the grave of Ummu Mihjan, that their graves are mamlu'atan dhulma, it's filled with darkness. But because I prayed Salatul Janazah over her grave, all the graves around her graves are now full with light. Any service to the masjid with sincerity will make me special in the eyes of Allah and will make me special in the eyes of Sayyidina Rasul. I, I feel like I spoke too long. I just want to make two points very quickly. Like I said, our Amir Shaykh Ibrahim already spoke. But may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all those who contributed to the masjid. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward the Imam of this community, the trustees, the committee, the musallis, everyone that played a role 
to the culmination and the of, of the opening of this new masjid, to the, 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 the renovation of this masjid. May Allah reward all in full. May your deeds and actions reach the court of Allah in such a state that Allah is pleased with all those who play their role, all those who are present. Amin, Ya Rabbil Alameen. May Allah bless all, may Allah protect all. As Shaykh Ibrahim prayed, may this become a community that is a leading community. A masjid that resembles the masjid of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and a community that resembles the community of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Amin, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Wa Sallallahu Ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa Ala Ali wa Sahbihi wa Sallam. Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Izzati Amma Yasifun. Wa Salaam Ala Musaleen. Alhamdulillah. Inshallah, Mufti Khan and Sheikh Ibrahim Gabriel's two giants in our community, Jazakallah Khairan, for taking the time to grace us with your presence and leave us with those poignant messages. And Inshallah, I hope the messages it sinks in and it inspires the, us to continue to serve the masjid and also to frequent the masjid, Inshallah and become those regular Muslims, inshallah. Mm -hmm. uh, we're running a bit over time, and inshallah, hopefully we will catch up. Uh, at the moment, we have two items left. It's basically, um, we our next item, before the vote of thanks, it is a, the recital of the Naad Sharif, and by none other than uh, Sheikh Ahmed Tahir, who is here, inshallah. Uh, we'll ask Sheikh to please uh, recite the Nacheri for us, inshallah. And um, if you can.
wassalamu alaihi mustafa mustafa man da'u li sofa sayyidun ummiya mish'alu جب ہوا تذکیرہ حسن مربوب کا والدحا کر دیا والقمر پر لیا السلاة علی والسلام علی آیتوں کی تلاوت بھی ہوتی دہی نات بھی بن گئی بات بھی والسلام علی مصطفیٰ مصطفیٰ من بعد صوفا سید امیہ مشعلوک الوفا کالبی حقیہ لیتا مدفا جو بھی آنسو بگے میرے سرکار کے سب کے سب
करती थी मेरे आने से मैंने क्या चुपके चुपके भरती थी अपने बहन से बोले उम्र ये तो बता क्या करती थी मेरे आने से मैंने क्या चुपके चुपके भरती थी मेरे में जब कुरान पढ़ा सुन के कला में पाक सुधा धीरे उम्र का बोल Our next item is a vote of thanks by Hafiz Uwais Adam. Hafiz Uwais is one of the five who fell at um, who leads us during our Tarawih Salah. And normally we are running short of time, so we're running a bit over time. Now normally what that happens during Tarawih Salah, then uh, Hafiz Uwais is our go-to man. He has to catch up the minutes so that we can end up on time, inshallah. So I'm not sure if he's going to get it right this time, but we are once again running out of time. So can you please weave your magic? Have it twice. الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا نهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. I didn't realize there's gonna be so much muftis and sheikhs around me, so a lot of firepower. And I'm not a sheikh or a mufti or qari, so that's why they're making me do the vote of thanks. One, I am on the time base to be quick about it, but one of the two eyes I decided just now, the the second one, it translates to. Praise to Allah who has guided us to this, and we would have never been guided if Allah had not guided us. It's on Surah Al-Araf, verse forty-three, and I think it perfectly embodies the fact that we as Muslims constantly give thanks and praise to Allah for whatever comes our way, and that's why we started by thanking Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala for not only granting us success in the the, the project to revamp and expand this masjid, but also, just for simply allowing us to be here today, to sit, to stand, to breathe, to see what is around us, to acknowledge that success, to enjoy it, and to worship Him from it. So, for a project of this size and magnitude, there's a lot of people to be thanked. And I mentioned every single group or individual or entity and singled them out with beer until supper is very cold. So, I'm going to try my best to move through fairly quickly and efficiently. So we start off with the executive committee and the imamat who forms the foundational core of this ministry. Their leadership and vision for this place has ensured its growth and maturation over the years, from its founding members to its current trustees. Countless hours taken out of their personal lives that they could have been spent just doing nothing or relaxing that they dedicated towards this ministry that has ultimately landed us where we are now. From what we see ourselves. And from the countless things that happens behind the scenes that we don't see at all, all of those big things as well as small things coming together to make a huge impact. We say thank you to our special guests for today, Mufti Abdul Rahman Khan, Sheikh Ibrahim Gabriel, Sheikh Mohammed Falanda, and Sheikh Ahmed Toy for their beautiful recitations, for taking time out of their personal lives and their Saturdays to come here and enlighten us as well. 
a special mention to uh, and special shout out to Imam Smiley. Well, I know I see so much to say here, but if I could only mention one thing, it would be that there's a feeling of just contentment and joy you get when you speak to Molana. It's something that I've experienced myself with it daily or weekly. Whenever you speak to Molana about anything, you always walk away feeling just a little bit happier. And to have a leader like that who inspires confidence in those around him and lifts everyone's spirits in such a way, it's, it's, it's a leader who ultimately succeeds and I'm so glad that Alhamdulillah we have such a leader here. Shukran to our beloved chairman, Arnold Schwarzenegger, I mean Asghar Khan, uh, also known as the chairmanator. Uncle Asghar is always here, and when I mean always here, he's always here, he's fighting, he's always walking around, pointing at random things, organizing things, he's got papers in his hands, he's making pamphlets and flyers and putting together so many different things. And I honestly don't know how the man does it. I don't know when he sleeps and how he juggles so many responsibilities. But he always has time to come and tell me about whatever movie or series he's watching and how I just need to watch that one. <laughs> and if that's, if that's not Baraka in your time, then I don't know what it is. <laughs> and then um, a massive thank you, Shukran and Jazakallah Khair to all of you as well, the community. Those who visit us weekly on Fridays from all over the city. Um, and those, the regulars who are here and don't get enough acknowledgement that are here every single day for every single walk with it. Fajr way before sunrise or Isha long after sunset, you all here are the life and soul of this masjid. And I know it's, it's cheesy and it's cliche to say, but you are the beating heart of this masjid because without all of you, this would just be an empty vessel that just stands here with wind going through it, cobwebs around. But all of you being here really just fills this place with nur, it fills this place with warmth. And we can't say shukran enough for that. Shukran for supporting us through the years, making dua and for buying all our acne and our cakes on such a regular basis. You know, I was thinking the other day, especially this last year of ramping up, there was, I mean, I like acne, but yes, there's a lot of acne to be buying on such a regular basis. Um, I think I was speaking to Uncle Oscar before, I think it was around five, five, five or six hundred thousand acne sales we did. And, but you all bought it, and in case you didn't get enough, don't worry, we're having acne as well. <laughs> um, and um, there was another acne joke I wanted to make, wait, I just saw the other time. No, I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> so, if I've forgotten any one question or group, please make me mark. But please know that you are valued and your contribution has not gone unnoticed. We may forget, or I may forget in this moment, but once everything is said and done, and everybody's gone to sleep, and everything's finished, just remember that, that Allah never forgets. And so, to wrap things up from my side, I want to say that, you know, it's, it's no, to everybody here, whether you're young or old, big or small, male or female, it's no small thing to be able to build a community that not only cares about each other, but also lifts one another up. And when you look around, you see everybody that's here, we have to make so much of shukr to say to Allah that we actually have a community like that. And while there's no real metric to measure how, how well we are succeeding individually at building out our Akira, I think that if you take a moment to pause and feel the atmosphere and look around to see what surrounds us, I say that it's it's a win for all of us to come. happy for ways. If that Korean deep history doesn't work out, one in public speaking and stand up is definitely a big story, inshallah. Mashallah for that. Um, Alhamdulillah, we've got another item, one item left, and then we can all go for supper. But um, one name that has come up twice now, because it is a construction related project, uh, that is of uh, Brother Moidin Khan, because he's been the one, Alhamdulillah, as project manager, Alhamdulillah, getting all the things together and so on. And we said we're not going to mention names, but it reminded me of a joke. So, there was this construction foreman, a very, very strict construction foreman. I don't know his name, but it's called him Moitin for now. And um, this construction foreman ran a very tight shop. And uh, someone came to site and he said, um, came for looking for work. And uh, he asked the guy, so what's your name? And the guy says, my name's John. And uh, 
construction foreman Moidi in his statement says, I don't know what wishy-washy construction company you worked for where you address each other by your first names, but I only address my workers on their surname. So I'll say, Jones, get me the spade. I'll say, Abrams, bring me the, uh, bring me the hammer. And that is how I address it, and it saves time, and that is how I maintain formality. So now I'm going to ask you once again, before I implore you, what is your surname? So that I can address you with it. You see, he looks down dejectedly, he says, Moedin, my surname is Darling. My name is John Darling. Moedin thinks for a second, he says, Okay, John, I tell you what. <laughs> so inshallah. Alhamdulillah, we are very blessed. Um, he's put a lot of his blood, sweat and tears into the project, literally. Alhamdulillah, and here we are today. And we may, and we make shukr to, you know, we stand on the shoulders of giants. And we have many to thank. And one of our next item is a, a gift handing over ceremony by our Vice Chair, Shaban Jardim. He is, you know, if anyone is the CEO, CEO he is the COO of this company. Somebody referred to him, the Chief Operating Officer. Now I'm busy, but Siobhan puts me to shame. So if I can ask Brother Siobhan, did we have our two trustees, Mashallah, uh, Brother Farid Sali, as well as Nur Muhammad Faki, who is lovingly known as Nuribai. If we can have him holding the purse strings very, very tightly. But Mashallah, without his frugality and without his management of the funds, in a very astute manner, we would not be here today. It's holding the funds back, knowing when to release and when to, um, when to collect. So you can expect that phone call at night. MashaAllah, as girl, we're running out of money. So MashaAllah, with that, I need another pamphlet. So MashaAllah, these um, our uh, brother community members. And what I would like to just say is we stand on the shoulders of giants. Alhamdulillah, at ease because of those who were here in the past. And we also say shukr to all the other masajids who have been supporting us. We received countless letters, and it's too numerous to, to mention, but one of them, mashallah, they took the time. Usami Masjid Kravendi, the executive wrote a letter of well wishes, subhanallah, just to wish us well. And I know they came in, 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 in large numbers at our, our opening, and I think many of them are here again today. So, Jazakumullah Khairan, uh, we say. Say Jazakumullah for your support, your timeless support over the years as our neighbor and um, all the other messages that have supported us and we've had a relationship with them. Um, so I am going to the gifts of uh, Shaban to our dignities. The first thing that we did in Sheikh Ibrahim Gabriel. I think I'm going to get the uh, Next we have the honorable teacher, one of the prime of the four, Uh, the one who 
one who entertained you very, very, very nicely today. Uh, Asghar Khan, mashallah. Allahu Akbar, Tabir. The buildings that stand here, mashallah, has been thought through by our honorable uh, chairman, mashallah. And look, they were standing, standing next to him, mashallah, the very stalwart building, mashallah. And then uh, I would not do justice if I don't call up uh, Honorable Omar Ibn al Khattab, Moidin Khan, mashallah. <laughs> mashallah. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, mashallah. Allahu Akbar. Ya Rasulullah. Alhamdulillah. And last but not least, to our honorable beloved Nolan and Hendricks. I know the bottle looks suspect, but believe me, it's fine. Tabir! Allahu Akbar. Jazakumullah khairan. Okay, so, inshallah, we'll be. So um, we, I've, been just been, I've just been informed that the food has been dished is getting cold. Wait, you are standing on holy ground. There's a reason we take off our shoes to stand on this. Wouldn't you want to frequent the masjid more? Think about it and make that niya inshallah that you want to be here more for the alqat, the five dollar alqat, whichever you can make. And inshallah we hope to have a full masjid, not just a beautiful masjid, but the beauty of the masjid comes with the attendance of the masjid as well. A full vibrant masjid. And with that, I greet you. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Well, inshallah, everybody will move towards the food, inshallah. Jazakum ya khair. Everybody can eat while the kasida is uh, being recited, inshallah. <laughs>
حسبي ربي جل الله ما في قلبي غير الله نور محمد صلى الله لا إله إلا الله حسبي ربي جل الله ما في قلبي غير الله نور محمد صلى الله لا إله إلا الله تيري صدقي ميقا سارے جہاں کو دین ملا بے دینوں نے کلمہ پڑھا